welcome. Hope you guys are signing on to our art class. How's it going, everybody? It looks like the sun is coming out. Hello, Caroline. Hello. Okay, there's Grace. And maybe Caitlin. Hello, Sienna. Hello, Gianna, if you're there. Sam, lots of people signing on. Hi, guys. Welcome. Hi, Sophia. I missed you guys. How was spring break? Um, I saw some of you, like I saw Sam did, um, where they traveled around the world, but from home. That was so cool. I'm obsessed with that idea. I love it. So cute. Um, I loved seeing um, you ate some of the food from the different countries. You learned some of the language from the different countries. Very fun. I'm um, excited to uh, do our art lesson and be back after spring break. I'm wondering, too, before we start, while we're waiting for people to, um, to sign on, how many of you did um, the challenge? Remember the color wheel um, scavenger hunt found object challenge? This is the one from my house. Can you see that from Mia's room, mostly? Uh, did any of you do that? Because I have only seen, like, two posted, and I'm... Really, really, really wanting to see everybody's work. Hello, everyone who's just joining. Oh, hi, the Duff, uh, hi, Duffies, too. Hello, everybody. Um, I want to also say happy Earth Day. Um, you know how I love vintage stuff, old things? And my mom, obviously, loves saving things. So look at this. This is actually a book from my mom did 50 years ago on the very first Earth Day ever. She did a march, and she was in Philadelphia. And there was like 139 countries that were part of it. And it's so cool. Like in this book, let's see some of this artwork. Let's see some of this. I mean, I love that my mom keeps these crazy things. Look at this. Can you see this? I mean, it's outstanding. It's filled with poetry. And it was all about, you know, same stuff it is today. Saving the earth, recycling, pollution, um, autos, um, uh, um, cars and things like that, all that kind of pollution. And I'm also wearing her pin. Can you see this? Her pin from 1970. Is that crazy? I love it. So I'm giving a shout out to the earth. It's mother earth. <laughs> and, um, I wanted to do something for earth day today, but then I had already had another project kind of in mind. So we're just giving a shout out to the earth. Hopefully today you can go plant a tree or plant some flowers, go outside. It looks like the sun's actually coming out. We weren't really sure what was happening here. And um, I do have a challenge for you while we're waiting for everyone to sign on. Hello. Hi, guys. Um, someone doesn't have watercolors. You're going to use markers. That's totally fine. You can do that, too. Don't worry. You can use you can color it in any way you like. Um, but I've seen on all the art teacher kind of Instagrams, uh, another challenge that they're doing. So this is a laundry art challenge. So you're taking laundry from your house and you're creating, uh, master pieces of art, like actual master work. So this is a Claus Oldenburg. Um, I'm sorry. Is it called? Yeah, it is Claus Oldenburg. I think it was where I looked and seen Claus Oldenburg. Um, burger that they made out of all out of, it's normally a sculpture. The real piece is a sculpture, but all out of laundry. Um, this one, the great wave. Very cool. Look at this all out of laundry. So you're recreating a master work of art out of laundry. So this is a challenge for you guys. I would love to see what you have. Starry night. We got Van Gogh starry night all out of laundry. So cool. I actually think down here they have some like cardboard and recycled pieces, but still, wow, so fun. The very famous Mona Lisa. Also my first name, Lisa. <laughs> um, so fun. Laundry. So this is all laundry challenge, guys. So try this out at home. It's just fun. Even if you have to go into some laundry that's not dirty. Um, this one, of course, is um, The Scream. So cool. And um, so that's just a fun kind of challenge. If you're if you're up to it, try take, taking the laundry, recreate a masterpiece of art challenge. And um, let's see. I'm going to say hi to people. So I get so close. You guys know how I'm like, what's it say? Hi, everybody. Hi, Matthew. Hi, Peter. 
Um, guys, today, so for our materials for today, uh, hopefully you all got a, um, saw a printout of it already, but it's white paper, so just a piece of paper, uh, any kind is fine, and even if you didn't have white paper, if you had something that drew on a different color or newspaper paper, that's totally fine as well, um, a pencil, permanent marker, uh, an eraser, watercolors, if you don't have watercolors, remember I did show you how to make liquid watercolor by just sticking an old marker in some water, you can do that. You can stick some food coloring uh, into water in a little glass or jar. You can make watercolor that way if you don't have watercolor. Um, and some of you might even have some of the watercolor that we made before, the liquid watercolor that we put in the pump spray bottles that we used for the graffiti lesson. And you could use some of that as well. No problem. And then you need a bunch of just art supplies or really anything, but I wanted it to be art supplies. So paint brushes, scissors, glue, anything that you can trace or draw today. Now I'm saying trace. Normally, of course, you guys know me. If we were in class and we were doing something like this, you, I would, they would ask me, oh, Mose, can I trace this? And I would say, absolutely not. No way. No way. I would make you try to draw it. Um, however, today, uh, because there's so many different age levels joining us and um i you know we just really wanted to work out so if you need to trace around today i'll show you how to create a contour line which is what we're going to be doing today and um with just tracing it too but for most of you i really want you to attempt at least first try drawing it yourself okay just by looking by observation because that's how artists um really like watch things, learn things, learn how to create new things is by actually observing. So a lot of times um, it's better just to really study it, stare at it and go ahead. Now, um, last thing before we start, if you have any of these around, this is not for today, but if you could start saving, if you have a piece of styrofoam, um, which isn't recyclable, it's not very Earth Day friendly, but it is good to use for art projects to do some kind of printmaking. So uh, these were actually from little mini cucumbers that I had. But if you have any of these, try to start saving those for a future lesson. And tomorrow, or not tomorrow, excuse me, Friday, we're going to be making clay. So um, I want to make sure that you have, and I've been telling you guys for the past few weeks, and we did have a break because of spring break, um, but in between, I've been telling you flour, uh, salt and water. Those are the main three things to make a basic clay. And uh, if you have uh, vegetable oil or canola oil, and then of course, cream of tartar, you can make a clay that is going to be more of a modeling clay that will last longer like this, that you can actually, uh, it won't dry out as quickly. So, um, but the basics, all you're going to need really for Wednesday, the basics are going to be just flour, salt, and water. And then I'll send out um, anything else that we're going to need. But for the clay, that's the basic thing we're going to need. So you're going to be able to make your own clay at home, which is fun because the possibilities are endless. So we're going to get started. And let me show you what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to be doing contour line drawings. And we are going to draw different art materials. Uh, different tools that you may use in the art classroom or while you're creating art. And a contour line is the outline of an object or a shape. So we're really just kind of drawing the outside shapes or the outside lines um, around all of these different tools and materials that you might use in an art room or when you're creating art. Okay, and then I'm going to show you how to add the color with paper towels and watercolor. And we're going to do some cool color mixing uh, kind of fun stuff as well. All right, so we're going to get started. I'm going to turn my camera and you know how that goes, everybody. So let's hopefully uh, make sure that it works out. So anyway, everybody, welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're back. I hope you had a nice spring break and happy Earth Day. And we are going to turn the camera now. So for those of you who get blurry or know that Miss Ace may drop the phone because it's happened before the camera and we're going to try very carefully not to do such a crazy, crazy act. I'm going to adjust it good and I'm going to turn it just a little more like this 
And let's see, can you see good? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay. So guys, here we go. Let me read a couple more fun facts first. Welcome back, everybody. I'm reading all the posts. Lots of stuff happening. Welcome. Glad you're here. All right, guys. So we're going to get started. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to choose um, some materials that uh, or some tools that you may want to draw. So I'm going to maybe draw a bottle of glue. I'm going to draw a pair of scissors. I'll probably draw a pencil. Um, I had pliers in this one. So I had a pair of pliers. Okay. And um, my watercolors. I'd add some watercolors in there. And definitely I want to add some paint brushes because I'm painting away. Now, something similar that we've done with uh, my fourth grade students is we studied an artist named Jim Dine. And we went ahead and did do different uh, contour line drawings of paint brushes. And then we took um, old crayons and heated them with a blow dryer and made it look like it was splattering around. And it was inspired by the artist Jim Dine. Um, this one, I'm going to have all of the tools facing the same direction. If you want to turn them in different, um, uh, in different directions, or if you want to have some run off the edge and you only see part of a paintbrush, so you're only seeing part of it, the other part is off of the edge of the paper, um, and have things coming from different directions, you definitely can. I'm just going to stick with something going all in the same direction right now for my composition. Remember, a composition is where you place all the different objects in your artwork. So in my case, I am going to overlap um, where I put, like here, I put my pliers on top of my paintbrush and my um, watercolors. So it's something like this, like watercolors, paintbrush pliers is similar to what I did right here and this one. Okay. Same thing. So overlapping is putting something on top of something else. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to grab a clean sheet of white paper and you can do this at this time too. If you want to draw with me, you can. And with the plain, you know, I'm going to put some black paper behind so you can see what's happening because I have white on the background. Let me put some black in the background. Oh my goodness, I have so many art supplies, people, so many things everywhere. Okay, that's good. Now, you'll start with just a plain white sheet of paper. And I'm going to take this. After I'm going to draw in a second, and then you'll have just your contour line drawing. So these are just the outlines without color, okay? So this is my glue bottle, my scissors, my paintbrush, my pliers, my markers, all those goodies, all those good things. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll add color later. But first, we need to get to this step. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to take a pencil. And you're going to be figuring out your composition. So the first thing you really need to do is to go ahead and take um, something and look at it. Okay, I'm going to look at this paintbrush. And I'm going to try drawing the paintbrush in pencil. Now, for those of you who don't want to draw or don't feel that you can get it the correct proportion or the correct size or the correct shape. If you really want to today, if, uh, my older students, I'm hoping you're trying this on your own first, uh, but definitely you could take a paintbrush or whatever you're drawing at that time and you could draw around the outside. So the first thing we're doing is the contour line. Everyone say contour, contour, contour. A contour line is the outline of a shape or an object. So you chase around or you draw it on your own. I'm going to draw mine on my own. And I'm going to go ahead and look at the some of the details. I don't need too many details, but if you look at my paintbrush, I have the bristles up here. Then, well, this paintbrush is pretty. It's been used. Look, I've been using, I've been painting people. And then there's the metal section and then there's the handle and there's also that little opening if I wanted to hang my brush. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of those details right now. And I'm going to add some of the lines. Now, I'm not sure you can see with the pencil what I'm doing. 
So I'm going to switch to marker right now. And I'm going to start drawing the outline of my shape, of my brush. And you all can definitely be starting right now if you like. Definitely pretend like, okay, now this is really funny, but when I was in eighth grade, I had an art teacher, Mr. Green, shout out to Mr. Green, and he would tell us with contour line to pretend like you were a little matchbox car and you were driving down the road right along the side. And it's true because you have to think of all the different textures and where there's a bump and all of these different things where it bends, where it curves. And that's what you want to do with your marker. You really want to pretend like, you're following the edge of all of these lines. You can pick up your marker or pencil to go ahead and draw the stuff. And if you make a mistake, of course, do not fret. You can definitely go ahead and erase anything that you need to. And I'm going to also add some of the texture. Remember, texture is how something feels. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of the texture of the brush. I'm going to show some of the bristles. I'm not going to show every single bristle. That would be very difficult to do. But I'm going to show just with my marker, I was able to add just a few lines in that vertical direction, the same way the bristles go, so that I could create um, the same texture, the look of that texture of the brush. And I'm going to keep going around and around. And I'm going to carefully trace my pencil lines if I have pencil lines okay uh, some of you maybe are super brave and know that you could do this without even doing a pencil line I know most of my students most of you would be like no way miss a I am definitely drawing that first now if you make a mistake when you're drawing your lines or your shapes your contour line and this is me now looking at my paint um, my watercolors. Uh, if you make a mistake, you can always make a line heavier or um, you can add more weight to the to the line. So we've talked about weight before to a line. And if I was in class right now, I'd say, okay, who would like a plus? Who wants to tell me for a plus what weight of the line means? So go ahead and in the comments, let's see, let's see some, uh, some knowledge, people. I want to see who's been listening. Uh, let's see. Anybody remember what weight is? That is correct. That is right. Weight of the line means the thickness or thinness of the line. So uh, right now, I'm just going around with a permanent marker, and I am tracing the outside lines. And I did say you needed a permanent marker today. If you don't have one, you can still use a regular marker. However, a permanent marker is going to work because later we're going to be adding the watercolor and a water-based marker will bleed or spread, which could give it a really nice effect. So it's not a problem. If that's what you have, don't worry. Just keep going with us. Um, but if you have a permanent marker, these first lines, these contour lines, contour, contour lines, the outlines of the shapes, those lines should be done in permanent marker if possible. If not, that's totally fine. Next, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to draw my pencil. Part of my lead is sharpened. I'm going to come down. And I'm just tracing all of my lines right now. There's my eraser. There's part of that metal part on my pencil. Look at that. That's what I just drew right there, looking good. <coughs> Excuse me. If you guys are tracing um, actual paintbrushes or something like that, uh, make sure when you trace the outline that you go back and put it to the side and actually add all the little kind of, the little details, like the things like the top here where the metal of the, the top of the brush actually meets the bristles or where this like little metal connector also meets the handle of the brush. Make sure that you're adding some of that as well. So I'm adding the top of my paintbrush here. This one's going to look like it's behind. Are you making sure to overlap? Remember, overlapping is when you are putting something on top of something else. So right now, hopefully, 
you have started and you are tracing some of your um, contour lines or uh, your drawing, I should say drawing, or tracing some of your uh, materials and you are creating contour lines. And as you see, I just keep going and let's make sure you can see that good. See what's happening so far is looking good. All of my weight of my line seems to be the same right now because I'm really just kind of drawing in my different objects. There's my scissors. I'm going to draw in some scissors. Okay. Looking good. And as I draw, I'm kind of going a little fast just to make sure I can show you everything with the time. Do not rush. Remember, you can always go back to this video for the next 24 hours on my story on Instagram and you can rewatch it or send it to a friend or family member. That's fine too. And then uh, after that, I have uh, remember learned how to archive them and I've been saving them uh, on YouTube. So you can go back and watch them on YouTube as well uh, for any time at any time. Um, but you don't get all the fun comments, of course. And I look crazy because I'm looking real close at the at the camera because I'm trying to read the comments, even though there's no comments there. Um, but art teachers always seem a little a little wild, anyway. So there you go. Anyway, so now I have my basic contour line drawing. I did outlines of everything. I do not expect that you have gone this fast by any means, and hopefully you really didn't. Um, but I have now traced all of my shapes in that black and white. Now, if you look at the difference of this one, I've added weight on there. There are some areas where I've added some more detail and I've added weight and all my texture and my brushes. I've added like the little lines to show that there is actually a handle or that kind of plastic coating on my pliers or I added more weight on the line around the outside of my watercolors. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So remember, you can just trace over the same line and your line's going to get much thicker. This also is a great way to correct any sloppy lines or ones where your craftsmanship uh, maybe wasn't as neat as you wished it was. Uh, remember, craftsmanship craftsmanship is uh it's all about craftsmanship basically is all about how well you execute what you're trying to do did you take your time um were you really nice and neat um i just got a time check from mimi she did a time check for me she's she's not fired anymore guys she got her job back over spring break and maybe I'm going to add some of these details on the brushes, just where there might be an indent, uh, maybe just a little curve in there. In here, I want to add that cool little circle. Now, in that circle on my paintbrush, if I want to make that a little more 3D, I can take my marker like this and do another curve line right there. Can you see that? So that I was able to make it look like you can see depth. So that's creating some space. Remember... Um, Space and depth really help uh, create a beautiful final masterpiece. Okay, so I'm adding the weight. Maybe here I'm going to go ahead and add this a little thicker. So you can go ahead and take your time while you're adding your colors. I'm going to make this a little thicker. Maybe I'm going to come here and make the weight of my whole marker. Okay, a little thicker. And... Also, did you notice when I did things like my glue bottle, when you were doing that contour line, hopefully you're watching to make sure that your lines curve, just like I told you in Mr. Green's art class, that you are making sure those lines curve. Really watch those lines. I'm going to also add some of the details of a glue bottle. Okay. Maybe I want to add a little curve here. Just some little accents. You can add it with little dots and lines. I'm just kind of going around. Uh, maybe I want my scissors to be a little heavier weighted, all that kind of fun stuff, okay? So I'm going to keep going doo -doo -doo, all the way around. And after you get all of your Sharpie done and you have all the weight of the line exactly how you like it, then I want you to take 
an eraser and a lot of times you'll see some of the pencil lines from your original contour drawings so what i want you to do is take a nice eraser uh, if you only have one on your pencil that works too um but you know i actually like these big pink pearl guys and i like to go ahead over the whole thing and make sure that i don't have any pencil lines showing so i have a complete black and white uh drawing contour line contour who remembers what contour means contour guys what does it mean it's the outline of a shape now some of you may have taken paint brushes and things and turned them the opposite way or cut running off the edge or on a diagonal that's fine maybe you overlap them in all different directions that would work too remember i stayed all in this vertical position but i did incorporate overlapping so that I would make my composition more interesting. And I also made sure that I had longer brushes and smaller items. So I had different sizes and different shapes that by overlapping them and filling in most of that space, I've created a beautiful composition. So that's contour lines. Okay. So contour line again is the outline of a shape. It's the outline of an object. Okay. Now, guys, we're going to add some color. So for fun, this is what's going to happen. Now, this one, if you see close up, um, I have did a lot of color mixing, so we're going to do that right now. And this is where you're going to need your paper towels. You're going to need your watercolors and some water. And uh, if you only have markers, that will totally work, too. You can also, you could just leave it black and white. You could color this in um, with colored pencils, crayons, uh, markers, you could do texture rubbings, you could do chalk, um, all different kinds of oil pastels, any kind of art materials you want, but I wanted to show you some of the fun things you can do at home. Um, so this is how we're going to color this one today. But if you have another idea, I would love to see it. And don't forget, everybody, do not forget to post your artwork on um, any kind of social media and tag it at art class with Miss A or hashtag it at art class with Ms. MS. A. And um, a lot of you have been um, emailing them to me um, or posting them on Facebook or Instagram. That's awesome. Anyway, that so I can see it. And I'm going to start actually posting all of um, the pieces that people, the um, work that students have done on my Instagram just to show off some of the stuff. So we can do that too. Um, and I would love to share your work and I of course just want to see it. So, and those challenges people, where's those challenges at? Okay. So the first thing we're going to do now, if you want, uh, you could start with warm colors, cool colors. You could do only warm colors, cool colors. What is your color scheme? Remember a color scheme are the colors you put into your piece of work in your picture. So what is it going to be? That depends. So I'm going to take a paper towel and all I did is folded it down. So it's just a folded piece of paper towel. So we're not going to use a brush this time. We're going to just paint with a paper towel and I'm going to dip. I'm going to dab my little, hold on, dab. I'm going to dab my little, um, paper towel into some water and I'm going to stand up just so it makes it a little easier for me, but I'm going to go ahead and start rubbing it into my watercolors. Okay. Oops. My black paper is getting messed up. That's okay. And you see, I just put a little watercolor on there and then I'm going to literally, hold on. Actually, I see something I didn't erase. Hold on people. Not cool. I like to erase stuff. What in the world? I like to see no pencils. I like to see no pencils, but I still see some. Okay. Now instant replay guys. I went into my water, I went into my paint, and I just smeared it in there. And now I'm going to take some of that and I'm just going to start dabbing around. And when you dab the color, I want to repeat the color a little. Okay, oh, I saw some eraser dust. Now make sure when you're doing this, you have something underneath you so that you're not getting uh, paint all over the dining room table or the kitchen island, wherever you may be. I'm in my art space, so I can make messes big messes uh because you know i actually i actually don't mind a mess as long as it gets all cleaned up people okay so first i started with the red and you can kind of see here where i started just dabbing with my wet paper towel and some paint some color 
and I'm going to do the same thing. Now, because I want to um, just stick with warm colors first, I can kind of reuse this same paper towel in honor of Earth Day. And I'm going to go into my thing. I might squeeze out a little. And I'm going to go into my orange. And I'm really, just so you can see, I am really rubbing in my paint color and my little cakes. No, I have orange. And I'm going to do that. Now, remember, when you take some of these different colors, the cool thing is that you will start to see some color mixing. And color mixing is so fun. So right now, red and orange is just going to make a red orange. I'm just starting with the warm colors. And I'm going to go ahead and do some yellow. But once I do some of these primary colors, like red and yellow, red, yellow, and blue are your primary colors, I'm going to be able to start making some new colors. So I'm going to take some yellow. And the yellow, because it's such a light color, uh, may... Oop, I got some green. That's cool. I already started green. Just on accident. That's fun. Uh, I'm going to actually go into the green. Because the yellow is so light, You a lot of times people might want to start with that, but I was kind of spreading it out, so it's totally up to you. Now I'm going to go in some green. And your, your brush may go, or not your brush, but your paper towel may go into the color next to it, and that's fine. Look at how I'm already starting to get some blue. Okay, now my paper is wet, so it's almost where you can kind of see through it, but you see what's starting to happen. And I'm going to squeeze this out. I don't want too much water. You don't want your paper to get so saturated that you can't, um, that it will tear. You don't want your paper to tear. So make sure that you're paying attention to how much water. If you need to squeeze some out of your paper towel, go for it. And I'm just going to keep adding. Boom, boom, boom. And I also, now my paper towel is pretty sad, but I feel like I can still use this. And it is Earth Day after all, people. I'm going to go right into my purple. I'm going to get a little more because purple. I've been loving purple, people. So I'm going to get some purple. I'm going to rub right into my, I'm rubbing right into my paint with my um, paper towel. And I'm just going to start dabbing around. And as I dab, I'm really just getting some of that fun color. I'm almost using my paper towel um, as my brush. So as my tool or material. I'm going to get a little more blue. And I'm going to flip this around. And I'm going to get a little more rod. Now, if you're one of those people who had um, watercolors that was made like this from a marker, you can just dab your paper towel right into that. Or if you made it out of food coloring and water, you can just dab right into your little jar of paint. Also, if you're one of my um, students have been working with us the whole time, when we did the graffiti, we made liquid watercolor that we put in old little spray pump bottles that were from like makeup or hair kind of products that you would normally recycle, but we're reusing them. So uh, you can definitely take, I'm going to take some of my hot pink that I made. And I'm going to go ahead and dab that. I'm still going to, you could spray it directly right on your paper. But in my case, I'm going to dab it um, onto, or spray it onto my paper towel. And I'm going to go ahead and keep dabbing. So I'm going to do that. So fun. Look what is happening with the color. It's outstanding. Let me go ahead and lift this really quickly so you can see a closer look. So fun. And I'm going to also use this same paper towel and use some of my other fun colors that I made the uh, graffiti. To. Oh, I sprayed my whole hand. Holy Toledo. Okay. And I'm going to take some of that fun color. Go around. That's fine, too. And hopefully you're noticing some of the fun colors you're making. Like with my, look at that. I just made purple with that blue and then the magenta. What a fun color to make. That's beautiful. Nice and it's popping out. Okay. Awesome. And you may have to clean your hands. Be careful if you're spraying. For sure, don't spray all over your house. I don't want any emails from your mama telling me you ruined her house. Okay, here's another one I made that day out of just like a hair kind of pump. And I'm going to go ahead and spray some turquoise color. Do some of that fun color around. And there you go. Basically, that's it. Okay, so now you could keep going or you could end there. Remember, I do always like to take a, let me first of all show you my finished coloring. 
So my color, all sorts of colors. Look at how cool that is. It looks like kind of a tie-dye color burst. So fun. Now, could you take um, chalk pastels or oil pastels or something and add other color into some of your stuff? Of course you can. You could add marker or color pencil or oil pastel and add some color in some areas. You could also, if I don't know if you can see it on mine from this, but I did take some glitter glue and I just kind of smeared some with my finger in certain spots to make uh, kind of sparkly. I think you can see it there a little sparkly areas. You can definitely do that as well. Um, I also want to show you, you know how I like to have things matted or framed like I did here where I matted it with black paper on the back? Um, because most of you can't do that. You're going to have an art teacher doing it all for the art show or something. I'm going to go ahead and take my black marker and go around the outside edge of my paper just like that. And that's going to help frame my artwork. Take your time when you're doing it, okay? Make sure you have paper underneath so that you are not smearing, oops, you are not smearing black permanent marker all over anything for that matter. So make sure you have a placement, a little tablecloth or a little piece of paper and you can kind of go around the outside edges just like so, okay? That's what I did here, okay? Can you see that nice edge that I put on there? Let's see if that, see that close. It really frames it. And um, remember, today, we went ahead first and we started out with um, our different art tools and materials and we made contour line drawings, okay? Contour, contour, it's the outline of a shape or an object, contour, contour lines, okay? We did those, we added some details and then we went ahead and took our watercolors um, and or markers uh, and went ahead and added all the fun kind of coloring to the background. And then we had our final piece that we may have added other color to, markers, um, added details, maybe even on our glue bottle, wrote, you know, wrote something, maybe your name, maybe I wrote art, but you could do whatever you like. You could also write words and stuff in there. And right now I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera back, okay? And um, let's make sure Miss A doesn't drop it so I can say Goodbye and hello and hello and goodbye. Okay. Ooh, I get so nervous that it's going to drop. Okay. Now, um, it didn't drop. Yay. Okay, so guys, uh, we're going to finish up today. Remember, we did contour lines. Contour line is the outline of a shape or of a object, of an object. And we first started by in pencil drawing our contour lines, okay? Well, we did a still life in a way because we were looking at something that sat still and then we drew it. And that technically is the definition of still life. Everyone say still life. Still life. And then we created by just drawing the outlines of the shape, contour lines. Everyone say it, contour. Contour. Contour lines are the outlines of the shape or an object. And we also overlapped. Everyone say overlapped overlapped, overlapping, and that's when we put things, different objects on top of other objects so that they look like things are on top of it or behind it. Okay, so we overlapped. And then we added all the fun color um, by just pressing our wet paper towels into our paint and kind of dabbing around. And it created a beautiful effect for our composition. And then that was it. That was our final piece. So we've, I can't wait to, first of all, see everybody's work. Okay. Hopefully you have something like this. I'm sure it's going to look good. Don't forget that you can add, you can add weight of lines, um, to create a different effect. You can outline around the edge to frame your artwork. You can add different colors or glitter or oil pastels or markers or crayons, anything you like. You can add any of those goodies, um, all those fun materials. And um, last thing is, just so uh, really quickly, remember the challenge, okay? So the challenge this week is the laundry challenge. Laundry challenge is create artwork, famous masterpieces, famous masterworks of art uh, with laundry in your house. That was the scream. Here's the Mona Lisa. 
here i have not done this one yet i did do the color wheel of course but i haven't done this one yet starry night i'll show you i'll uh, show you on friday what i come up with um the great wave look at that claus oldenburg these burgers and if you haven't done it, don't forget to do the scavenger hunt with your family color wheel for your house and send a picture. Post it. Um, hashtag it at art class with Miss A. Um, first of all, again, props to Earth, Mother Earth, 1970, guys, vintage. Um, happy Earth Day. Um, go outside, plant something. Make sure you create. Make sure that you post all your stuff to me. It's been so fun. Um, doing these art classes with you. I actually really missed you in this last week. I should have just done art classes during spring break. Anyway, I had a lot of people who wanted it. Um, but then I thought, oh, is everyone going to do it? I thought too much about it. I shouldn't have. I should have just done it. So anyway, I missed you guys. I'm glad you're back. I'll see you on Friday. Don't forget Friday, flour, water, and salt. Definitely. Okay, because we're making clay. And if you have other items, you could add vegetable oil and cream of tartar for your clay to last longer. Um, but for what we're going to do on Friday, you do not need that. You can just have simply flour, salt, and water, okay? So we're going to make clay. Um, I hope that I see you on Friday. I'm so glad you guys are here. And I'm going to go ahead and try to archive um, the video so that I can save it. Remember, you can watch this for the next 24 hours on Instagram under my story. And then I'm going to archive it and put it um, on Facebook for all of you guys for your viewing pleasure for the rest of your lives <laughs> all right love you guys miss you guys